Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Biz Tip. So I was on LinkedIn for about a few months and I kept seeing these posts. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? So <laughs> I love his content so much. I had to bring him in, guys. His name is Nativ uh, to share some of the stuff that he's doing with TikTok ads. And I can't wait for you to learn. What's going on, man? How are you doing? How are you doing? I am fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for jumping on. So before we get the ball rolling, who is Nativ? I'm really hoping I didn't mess up your name. <laughs> no, no, you got it right. A lot of people get it wrong. But yeah, essentially, my name is Nativ Yanko. Um, I'm from London and I own a TikTok agency and we help e-commerce brands scale through TikTok ads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a bit about myself kind of personally. Um, I'm quite young. I'm 20 years old. And wow. I used to play football. Um, soccer for all the Americans out there and <laughs> I had a big injury kind of the classic knee injury mm. um, so I kind of got into marketing and then the rest is history I love it I love it so let's go back right you used to play football or soccer T tell us about that How, yeah. <laughs> were you good yeah. <laughs> I mean there was I started when I was around four so oh, I was wow. very young and I signed for a Premier League team called Fulham Football Club when mm -hmm. I was nine. Um, just went through the ranks. And then around 15 years old, um, I got selected for the England national team. Wow. So from there, from there, it was kind of, that's when I was really in the motion, dialed in. Um, but unfortunately, around 18 years old, I had like, um, like um, consecutive injuries. I had like, three injuries within three years oh wow um, and like i was thinking what do i do do i carry on like this do i mm -hmm. kind of look into different avenues and obviously as a young person it's it's like football was my whole life like yeah to get into the england national team i went i played football every day i went to a football school so to drop it was like a very big decision and kind of the reason i chose marketing and entrepreneurship was mm -hmm the skills that come from sports, mm. from football, from high high professional kind of environments, it's very similar to entrepreneurship. It's very competitive. Yeah. Um, and it's like very high risk, high reward kind of game. So that was, that's the kind of person I am. And that's, that's kind Love of what I chose marketing. Yeah. So I'm curious, right? The mindset, because you've been playing football since you were four years old yeah. to like, 18 so what was your mindset especially at that high level that you played at what, what was that mindset that you you know that you have and then also what you're seeing competing with these guys I mean it's it's very very cutthroat like especially in the UK like in the UK football is like number one by a country mile in America there's like NBA um, American football but UK Everyone, when they're a kid, they want to be a footballer. Like in school, wow. when you're four, they ask, "Would you want to be a Would you want to be?" They'll be like a footballer, a football mm -hmm. goalkeeper, in like any position. So the competition is cutthroat, and obviously that leads to, um, oh, and obviously we're young as well. So our yeah. emotions, our hormones, our testosterone's through the roof. So, um, like it would be safe to say, ninety percent of my day I was thinking about football mm. um, and I was always trying to find that edge to get in front of everyone else I was always trying to find those little nuggets mm. because, like what I've seen similar in business to be honest is at this level everyone's very similar it's, they're not that yeah. different but the differentiating factor is definitely the mindset yeah. like the consistency um, not the strategy because people know the strategy but it's just implementing the, the strategy at a higher scale scale at a higher mm -hmm. level at a higher intensity so yeah it was very intense and kind of I'm happy the way it's made me so far and to be honest it has helped me a lot in business as well but still got a long a long way to go with that no I love it man now let's dive into you becoming an entrepreneur how was that, you know, how was that process? How did you go about choosing TikTok and starting an agency with TikTok? Tell us more about that. Okay, so obviously I was, was I 19 at the time? 
Yeah. So you can imagine, you and with my circumstances coming out of football, I was very hungry for like a quick, quick win. Uh-huh. So I fell, I kind of fell victim to one of these, not victim, but I, I fell into the trap of like the gurus. I found <laughs> them on Instagram. Uh, so I bought one of their courses. Uh, they taught me kind of the fundamentals of, of mm. advertising. And this, however, this was Facebook advertising. Mm. And as we know about Facebook, um, there's a million and one different Facebook agencies out there. Yeah. And like, I didn't get a client. I didn't get my first client for 10 months. Wow. So you can imagine, you can imagine I was thinking every different kind of option there is with Facebook ads, how to get clients. So it was wow. driving me insane. Um, and what I, what kind of, I just figured out was, there was so much competition and my knowledge wasn't up to par. So I had to position myself differently. Mm-hmm. And the reason I chose TikTok after Facebook, when I didn't know, when I couldn't really win in Facebook was my advantage. I looked at myself and was like, what's my advantage? And mm-hmm. or like, what's my differentiating factor? And the different differentiating factor is my age. I'm quite young. Mm-hmm. And TikTok was obviously uh, at the beginning, 2020 yeah. was for young people. So I just thought that was a perfect fit for me. And um, I can really position myself as the guy that's kind of really involved with TikTok. Because as you can imagine, like people my age yeah. have grown up with TikTok. It's like embedded when I was in high school, when I was kind of 17, 18, everyone was talking about TikTok. Mm-hmm. So I think my competitive advantage to get into TikTok was everyone around me use, is using it. And a lot of the brands are targeting those exact people and that's who I am so mm, who better okay. can understand the the who better can understand the customer than the customer himself which is me which is the 100%. age range so that's that's kind of how I fell into TikTok um, I love sure. it who better to understand the customer than the customer itself that exactly. that that is a gem now <laughs> I want to go a step further because you didn't just get into TikTok you start killing it with like yeah. UGC and ads. Tell us what, because um, there's a lot of business owners that still have no idea what UGC is. Can you tell us exactly what that is, especially for the brand owners that are trying to find ways to be different in the internet? Right yeah, now? for sure. So essentially the definition of UGC is user generated content. Uh-huh. So it's all these videos where there's like a talking head of the camera, yeah, where it's very native and very natural. It's not very high production. Um, and that's kind of the the go to winning formula with TikTok, because yeah. uh, going back to the customer, which every single advertising campaign needs to start with the customer in mind. They're young. All the videos are on there of young people making these kind of videos. Um, so the kind of the way I think I've we've excelled as an agency um, is putting 90% of the focus onto the video, to the actual video. Mm. Because on Facebook, the media buying, how you target, all that kind of stuff, that's quite important. It's it's quite important, not so much after iOS 14, but on TikTok, uh, it's really, really creative focused. And the way I, I, I kind of observed that, I saw, okay, the media buying is not as important. You can there's lots of different ways to success, but with the videos, that's the main leverage point that I can focus on. Mm. So I kind of positioned myself and I built internal systems to really target the, the, the leverage point that can differentiate myself from all the other agencies and give my clients the best results. So what we did actually was we introduced a very scientific approach to the, the ad creation instead of just um, telling the the creators, make a video and we'll post it. Mm. We don't do it like that. We're very, very scientific with it. So essentially we break the video into five, six, seven pieces, like the hook, the body copy, the call to action, the product introduction. And we get the raw clips of them. So we ask them to make just one video of them saying a hook, one video of saying, uh, body copy and in that way when we post the videos yeah and we can see the metrics we can we can see oh the f- the first two vid the first two seconds of this video is performing well but 
the call to action on this video is working better oh, than this wow. one. So now we can use like a Lego brick kind of formula. Like we know this concept works here and from video two, the call to action works. So now we can make a third option, a third iteration where we combine the winning component from the first ad and the winning component from the second and create the third. And That's then genius. that way it's, it's like natural selection, like um, <laughs> uh, Darwin's theory essentially. Yeah, like, yeah. You find we see best. what wins out of both, oh, and then wow. we just kind of we breed them together essentially to make the best video. And then after a while, once we once you've tested a few rounds, you know what works exactly, and you can mm -hmm. really hone in on that concept. And that's how you kind of scale that way through the creative. I mean, it's it's very scientific, and it's not really there's no guesswork involved. It's all pure metrics and analytics. Um, now so this that's is how genius. We approach it. I have yeah. a, a follow-up question, right? Because by doing that, you know, you, you might end up spending a lot of money up front testing, but then once you have the best video, now you start seeing a higher performance, right? Yeah, So yeah, and, and it's, it's the concept. It's not just the video. It's like why the video works. We don't have mm -hmm. to make the exact same video again, but we can understand the concepts and make very similar videos to that. Now... You work with a lot of e-commerce brand. Tell us some of the success stories that you've seen using your yeah. scientific concept. So literally before this call, actually, like um, we were starting with a new branding and in testing and they've been running ads before. Yeah. Um, and a lot of issues we find is that with ad fatigue, like they don't, um, they don't create enough videos. So what we did was, was we just, so we saw what videos worked for them in the past. Mm -hmm. We created five, six, seven, eight different videos. Um, and we tested it today. And obviously through the test, we found three winners. So, mm. and those winners were excellent. Um, and then we just scaled it up that way. But in terms of success stories, um, we work with the Amazon brand um, and they've increased their, they've increased their like revenue by 150% within like three, four months. Wow. Because they, they weren't running any they weren't running any um advertising campaigns anywhere so we just uh, brought them in that way we built them a kind of a landing page from scratch mm. and sent all the traffic there and really restructured their whole funnel to make it to incentivize people to get their foot through the door and then the lifetime value will kind of that's that's when the real profits kick in um, so yeah, I would say oh, wow. uh, one of the one of the best results has been like 150 percent within three months or so. Now let me ask you this: um, We know there's a, a, all these different platforms. There's some type of budget that people are gonna ask. You know, how much budget do I need for this to start working for me? Should I be looking at a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars? What have you seen has been kind of a range? Because it's not the same for everybody. But yeah, from 100%. like testing to ongoing. Uh, with certain brands i would say realistically tiktok would be a bit more uh you have to a bit more upfront investment compared to facebook okay i would say for the testing period to to really get enough data i would say 100 dollars a day to start off with for the first week or so okay um, to get like uh, good data to make decisions moving forward and then I would say $100 a day till $200 a day. That would be a good place to start realistically if you're trying to build a long-term structure. And I would I would suggest to 80% of brands start with Facebook and mm. then also bring TikTok in afterwards um, and then you can retarget back on Facebook as well. So, yeah, so to answer your question, $100 to $150, $200 realistically to start off with, yeah. Wait, you said something here. Start running ads on Facebook and then run ads on TikTok and then retarget that same audience on Facebook? Yeah, I mean, you, you can start on TikTok, but we found good success where the retargeting on, like, we want to create an omni-channel presence, essentially. Okay. We want to be in front of the customer everywhere. Every day, yeah. Um, so one way we do that is we advertise on Facebook and mm -hmm. then TikTok, and then we see the people that have landed on the page or like added to cart or even purchased, actually not purchased, sorry, added to cart or initiate mm -hmm. checkout, checkout, where they're very close to purchasing, but they haven't actually purchased. We will then 
get get their data and then implement it into Facebook to retarget them on Facebook. Gotcha. So that it kind of really pushes them over the edge. And that way it's it's a bit cheaper because they're warmer prospects. Yeah. Um, so Facebook's quite good for retargeting and TikTok is very, very strong at prospecting, like gaining new customers. Ah. So if you if you add those two together, you've kind of built a good funnel of like top, middle, bottom of the funnel kind of holistic 360 approach now uh, this is genius <laughs> you're just sharing <laughs> golden nugget this is awesome i love it yeah. now i want to go a step further right like, let's talk about your agency because now you have customers that you're working with what kind of customers do you normally work with who you're looking to work with more of and, and you know what has been kind of like your highlight so far beside 150 percent for that one client I would say, well, we, we only work with cosmetic and cosmetic and supplement brands um, just because we know the winning formulas. Um, mm. So, yeah, we only work with cos- cosmetic and supplement brands. Um, that's what we, that's what we specialize in. Um, and what was the second question? What what for the agency itself? What has been your highlight, you know, so far building it? Like what do you enjoy the oh, most? Oh, building it like as an yeah. owner. Yes, yes. I would say, like, to be honest with you, my f- getting my first client, like, mm. as you can imagine, like, I'm a young guy, didn't get a client for 10 months. Like, I've got yeah. a burning fire inside of me. <laughs> so once I closed that one client after all those 10 months, it was like a big, big relief on my shoulder. And I, was ever, I felt like I was on top of the world there. Uh, but then I came back to realization, oh, now I need to really perform for these oh. clients. Um, and, and really keep them for month one, two, three, four, five and deliver results. And my my thing always after I got my first client was if I put the client first, everything will just everything will work out for itself. Like I read yeah. I read a piece in like uh, Jeff Bezos's um letters to shareholders and his number one thing, his like Polaris star is customer satisfaction like always make the customer deliver for the customer and everything will just fall into place after that with a little nudge um, mm. the, the the results will, will speak for itself essentially no i love it i i love that mindset that you have what what's what's the plan for you with this business for the next uh two three years where do you see it as how big do you want it to go i mean I'm, i've got quite big aspirations to be honest with you like at the beginning there was I was definitely thinking oh, I just want this to be like a um, a lifestyle kind of business where mm-hmm. you get to like uh, a certain amount of money and you, you live on the beach but my perspective has really changed on that mm. I'm, I'm really really looking to build this very big genuinely um, and I want to branch out into Facebook mm-hmm. I want to branch out into Google ads and I want to become like the go-to media um, kind of agency yeah and supplement brands and health and wellness brands that that when they want like a full stack um media media buy-in and full stack um ugc creation i really want to extend on the videos as well because um that is the as i mentioned before that is the main leverage point um and i want to be known for the agency that provides excellent excellent scientifically tested UGC creatives that perform mm. every single time um, and I want and I just want to um, kind of build it vertically and horizontally with with a lot of clients but yeah. also valuable clients valuable relationships and um, like a good foundational team that we're all striving for the same goal so we all have the same incentives um, and just move forward and deliver great great results for clients so yeah. I love it so for all the business owners that's listening out there, right? You, you were in the trenches for 10 months and, and you stayed consistent until you got your first client. What would be that um, small biz tips that you would share with any entrepreneurs out there? Maybe they're going through some challenging time, right? They're, they're trying to figure it out for themselves. Um, what would you share with them that you think can help them? I would say two things. The first one is, the person that can get from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm will always mm. win in the end. 
Mm. That's that's one quote that I love, and that's kind of real, really, really drove me forward. Like every failure that you have, don't yeah. lose enthusiasm. Keep on it, and it will work in the end. The second one is make it unreasonable not to succeed. Mm. Meaning, put so much volume in, so much volume that it's like if you tell people oh, I don't succeed, and they ask you, "Oh, how much did you do?" and you say, they're like, "Whoa, how do you not succeed?" Like. Make it unreasonable to succeed. Everyone knows what to do, but just yeah. implementing it at volume and like it will work in the end. If you really, really stick to it through the hard times, no one wants to compete on patience. I, I said that in my LinkedIn post as well. Like if you're patient, the, the longer you are patient, the less competitors you have. No one wants to compete on patience. Woo-hoo. No one wants to, they want to compete on price, yeah, on quality. No one wants to wait the longest time and the people that wait the longest time win in the end. Like just look at Amazon. They they don't make profit for like 15, 20 years and everyone was asking who the hell is this Jeff Bezos guy? But who's laughing at the end? Who's laughing? <laughs> it's definitely Jeff nah, Bezos. This is awesome, man. Um, yeah. uh, for any of our cosmetic e-com brand that's listening to us, if they want to work with you or want to see if they're even the right fit to work with you, um, how do they get in touch, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can always look at my LinkedIn. It's just my name, Nativ Yanko, N-A-T-I-V-Y-A-N-K-O. Um, I post every, I post five days a week on there. Just mm. tips and tricks about TikTok ads. Um, and then there's like a little link in my bio to book a call and get in contact with me. So if anyone wants to kind of increase their knowledge on TikTok and e-commerce in the cosmetics and supplement space, uh, definitely uh, check out my LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be posting every day on there. Guys, Nativ Kunk Yanko is freaking amazing. I'm telling you, I love his content on LinkedIn. That's why I had to bring him in. As you can see, he knows his stuff. Thank you for coming in, brother. Really appreciate you. I appreciate the opportunity. Cheers. Cheers.